The Appalachian Mountains Natural beauty as far as an eagle can see The lushness of summer The colors of fall And the what? Moonscapes. Stop. Go back. That awful destruction was caused by mountaintop removal coal mining. Appalachian coal began forming hundreds of millions of years ago from layers of plant matter. These seams set in the ground for millions of years. During this time, water seeped through them. Part of whatever was dissolved in this water was left behind and accumulated. Therefore, coal and the layers of rock above and between it can contain various amounts and combinations of minerals, metals, heavy metals, dioxins, and PAH compounds. When coal is burned, some of these are concentrated in the remaining ashes and other residues which are supposed to be safely stored, but sometimes devastating spills happen. And some of these are released into the air along with carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas, nitrogen and sulfur oxides, which cause acid rain, crystalline silica, soot, and other things. According to a 2004 study, dirty air from coal-fired power plants are responsible for 24,000 premature deaths, 38,200 non-fatal heart attacks, 554,000 asthma attacks, $167 billion in health costs, and some 3 million lost work days annually in the United States. Heavy metals in the atmosphere spread and circulate around the globe, from countries with low pollution controls to countries with high ones. A UN report reveals that coal combustion is the largest source of human-generated mercury released into the atmosphere. According to the EPA, two-thirds of the total mercury released into the air is human-generated. The rest comes from volcanic eruptions and other natural phenomena. Rain carries this mercury back to Earth. Much of it ends up in water, where bacteria convert it to methylmercury, its most toxic form. Then, it enters the food chain. With each step, its percentage increases in the muscle tissues of the fish. Generally, Older or larger fish contain higher concentrations of it. People who eat fish, and animals that eat fish, such as dolphins, loons, egrets, and many more, including bald eagles, run the risk of accumulating harmful concentrations of mercury in their bodies. Coal is mined around the world. It is abundant in the central Appalachian Mountains of the United States. This area is unique to the world because its temperate hardwood forests contain northern species and their southern counterparts. It provides habitat for a wide variety of animals. Morel mushrooms, ginseng, yellow root, black cohosh, and other bounty for people. And pure water from numerous springs and streams. According to an EPA report, these rich and diverse forests are some of the last remaining stands of an increasingly threatened forest type that was once widespread in the Northern Hemisphere. Mountaintop removal is now the coal company's preferred method of mining these mountains. First, the mountaintops are cleared of trees and vegetation, before and the same area after. Next, the dirt and rock above the coal are often loosened with explosives. These explosions disrupt people and wildlife with loud booms, hurl chunks of rock a quarter of a mile or more, shake the ground, damage wells, crack foundations, and puff clouds of corrosive sulfur compounds, coal dust, which can cause black lung disease, and other pollutants into the air. Then, the coal is removed, and the debris is pushed into adjacent valleys. This debris often covers headwater streams, the habitat of little creatures at the bottom of the food chain for downstream fish. Rocks, mud, sediment, minerals, heavy metals, and other pollutants from these valley fills slide and erode down. 
They end up in streams used as a drinking water source for local residents and kill native fish and aquatic life. Later, man-made ditches that remain dry and lifeless most of the time are constructed down treeless slopes to replace the shady and life-filled head streams that once flowed from pure mountain springs. Huge equipment, called drag lines, are used to excavate the coal. A drag line is about 200 feet tall, can hold 100 tons of coal in its scoop, and can replace 100 laborers. After the coal is removed, the sites are supposed to be restored to their original conditions and approximate contours. But loopholes in the law allow coal companies to leave these areas flat or gently rolling, containing almost no topsoil, and planted with non-native grasses or lespedeza, a weed that is inedible for humans, wildlife, and livestock. This weed is invasive and has spread to untouched forests around the mining sites and is threatening native grasses, wildflowers, and herbs. These flattened, nearly barren mountain tops cause frequent flooding in the valleys below because they no longer contain mosses, leaf litter, native grasses, and trees that hold rainwater and slowly release it in the form of mountain springs. Next, the coal is washed in processing plants. The remaining wastewater contains coal dust, clay, and carcinogenic chemicals used to process the coal, and metals such as arsenic, mercury, lead, copper, chromium, cadmium, boron, selenium, and nickel. It is stored in nearby valleys and held in place with dams, usually built from mining refuse. This mess often leaches down into groundwater. Residents near these sludge ponds live in constant fear because these dams can burst, dumping millions of gallons of sludge onto homes and towns, causing fatalities and much devastation, and pouring sludge into valleys and waterways, killing wildlife, and sending pollution many miles downstream. The washed coal is transported to power plants and other facilities where it is burned. Even if industries could capture and safely store the carbon dioxide, the airborne pollutants, and the toxic residues, coal still would not be clean. It would leave a long, dirty trail. The permanent loss of ecosystems, wildlife habitat, headwater streams, and carbon dioxide and water absorbing trees. The noise, dust, vibrations, and damage from blasting. The constant threat of flash floods and sludge spills and polluted groundwater, streams, and drinking water. Since nearly half of the electricity in the United States is generated by coal-burning power plants, one solution is to simply use less electricity. Are you guilty of decapitating these mountains? Do you overheat your home in the winter? Do you overcool it in the summer? Take long showers, forget to turn off unused lights, leave your computer, DVD player, and other electronics on standby instead of turning them off. Think about it. Replacing coal with renewable sources of energy could put an end to mountaintop removal mining. New jobs would be created in the manufacturing of parts for and in the construction and operation of generators fueled by the sun, the waves and tides, geothermal energy, the wind. Oh, don't worry. Scientists are designing wind turbines to be much more bird and bat friendly nowadays. Switching to alternative energy would help reduce greenhouse gas emissions too. Other ways to combat global warming are reusing and recycling, using energy-efficient lights, electronics, appliances, and vehicles, using public transportation, walking or bicycling, using a clothesline, and eating less meat, dairy, and eggs, or simply going vegan. According to a UN report, livestock farming produces significant quantities of methane and other greenhouse gases, creates much pollution, and causes many carbon dioxide absorbing trees to be cut down to make room to grow animal feed. As you have seen, coal leaves a long dirty trail of destruction and pollution. If you want to learn more about mountaintop removal mining and how you can help stop it, please see this list of sources. Thank you.